what I would rather emote passionately. Uh, I go way back with Ms. I was at the opening meeting in Tudor City in an apartment that led to the founding of the magazine. And I, my various books have been excerpted in their pages and reviewed with kindness up to a point. That point was the conference in Copenhagen, the United Nations conference, where it was a precursor of Durban and I saw feminists from America, including from Ms. Magazine, fold, cave right in as the kill Israel, hate Israel mobs, carefully choreographed by both Russia and the Palestinian Authority, corrupted the meeting entirely. Recently in the pages of the New York Times, Gloria Steinem wrote that we should not hold the only female presidential candidate to a higher and different standard than we hold male politicians. She said that when we do that, it is called sexism. From 1972 on, I have been explaining to Gloria and to other Ms. Feminists that we should not hold the only Jewish state to a higher or different standard than we hold all other nation states, and that when we do that, it is called Jew hatred, or racism, or anti-Semitism. And I have banked my reputation, fragile though that might be, on in my recent book about the new anti-Semitism, one of the things that in this era makes anti, in this era, anti-Zionism now has merged with classical anti-Semitism. And Israel, the only Jewish state, is the pariah or rogue nation state among all nation states. Unlike others, I am not surprised by what Ms. Magazine has just done. I have been tracking the failure of feminism and its Palestinianization by what used to be far left forces and is now really the liberal mainstream force. So um, Ms. Magazine and the National Organization for Women and the Feminist Majority, which has taken over Ms. Magazine, and Western feminists in general, alas, chaval, they are now more increasingly concerned with the occupation of a country that does not exist, occupation in quotes, I refer to Palestine, than they have been concerned with the occupation of women's bodies worldwide, but especially women's bodies in Islamic countries. I stopped reading Ms. a while ago, but I did last night look at their articles on Israel and Palestine and ask me about that afterwards. They are scandalous in their anti-Zionist bias. I am heartbroken, I am ashamed, but I am not surprised, I am disgusted. So when you have Israel characterized by feminists as the Nazi apartheid state by the very same feminists who will not talk about Islamic gender and religious apartheid, which is the real deal. That is a betrayal of women and men under the Islamic totalitarian regimes that surround Israel. In the pages of Ms., you have glowing odes to Shireen Abadi, who lives in Iran with whose policies I would hope Ms. disagrees. That is the country that is a totalitarian thugocracy, a theology, a, a, a theocratic totalitarian state. These three women are saints compared to many of the women featured in the pages of Ms. Um, so it doesn't serve the cause of women everywhere or of Palestinian women to demonize and isolate the Jewish state as an apartheid state, quote unquote, and to fail to talk about jihad and hatred of Western ideals and hatred of democracy uh, that characterizes current day Islam. Now Israel is not perfect. What country is perfect? Who is perfect? But Israel has been the only country universally demonized. The United Nations specializes in this. Now it's sort of ironic because Israel absorbed the 850,000 refugees, namely Jews from Arab countries who were forced to flee post the founding of the Jewish state with $10 or a dime in their pockets. 
didn't turn to the UN for funding, whereas the Palestinians have turned to the UN for billions of dollars for their ever-growing refugee population. Feminists, by the way, have not supported Ayan Hirsi Ali, the ex-Muslim feminist dissident, originally from Somalia and now from Holland. They said, well, she's too anti-Islam and she is not anti-American enough. She's not anti-imperialist enough. So, let me say that these three women who were featured in this ad identify with the West, and the American Jewish Congress couldn't even buy them a place in the pages of Ms. Magazine. I want to say that Dorit Beinish, the president of the Israeli Supreme Court, is a judge who twice voted in favor of the women of the wall right to pray in the women's section, and this is a project that the American Jewish Congress has long been associated with. I bless Judge Beinish, and Ms. Magazine should be giving her a praise, not banishing her from their pages. Now, Ms. Magazine has the right not to write an ad, absolutely, but they further reveal how Palestinianized they've become, how Stalinized they have become. This is not the feminism that the three of us once knew and were pioneers in. And I want to congratulate the American Jewish Congress for having the courage to stand up to the Ms. Empire for love of Zion and for the love of truth. It is my honor to stand here with them today. Thank you.